One minute ago, Italy's emergency alert system interrupted every television and radio broadcast across the nation. A shocking announcement declares a state of emergency for the Campi Flagrari volcanic region. Evacuation planning begins for 500,000 residents living directly inside an eight-mile-wide crater. But buried deep within the official statement is a single line that changes everything. Elevated seismic patterns consistent with volcanic unrest. What the broadcast doesn't mention is the private phone call from Stanford University that triggered this alert. What did scientists discover that forced authorities to act? And why has the danger been invisible for so long? The call came at 3.17 p.m. from researchers halfway across the world. Stanford scientists had run artificial intelligence through Italy's seismic monitoring data. The AI model revealed something impossible. Cambi Flagrari had been hiding 42,000 earthquakes from the monitoring systems. The volcano is four times more active than anyone believed. Traditional methods had tracked roughly 12,000 earthquakes between 2022 and 2025. The AI expanded that index to 54,000 events, each tremor a warning, each quake a message from deep below. But this wasn't about the morning's magnitude 4.4 earthquake. It was about what that quake represents, the beginning of an awakening. The data revealed a perfect ring-shaped seismic structure forming beneath the caldera floor. Two massive fault systems converged directly under the town of Pozzuoli, west of Naples. Italian colleagues were stunned by the clarity. The ring fault had been there all along, pulsing with energy completely hidden from conventional detection. Scientists now warn that a magnitude 5 earthquake inside this caldera could trigger something far worse than ground shaking. And the ground itself has been screaming warnings for years. Campi Flagrari doesn't erupt like normal volcanoes. It reseals itself, trapping pressure for decades, building energy like a vast geological pressure cooker beneath one of Europe's most densely populated regions. The current pressure buildup cycle began quietly in 2005. Since then, the ground has risen 1.46 meters. That's nearly five feet of vertical uplift. Seismic activity has climbed exponentially. Gas emissions from vents like Solfatara now reach levels consistent with pre-eruptive conditions. Everything points toward a system nearing critical failure. The numbers tell a story of mounting tension. Ground deformation rates now exceed those recorded before the caldera's last eruption in 1538. Earthquake frequency has accelerated faster than any previous cycle on record. The self-sealing mechanism that makes Campi Flagrari so dangerous works like this. After each eruption, the magma chamber cools and solidifies at shallow depths, creating a cap. Pressure builds beneath that cap for decades or centuries. No release, no warning steam, just silent accumulation until the seal fractures. What came next shocked even the scientists. Authorities now face a nightmare dilemma. How do you tell half a million people they live inside a supervolcano? Not near it, inside it. The eight-mile crater formed by ancient eruptions is now home to thriving towns, schools, harbors, and hospitals. Puzzuoli alone holds 72,000 residents. Agnano, Baculi, and a dozen other communities spread across the caldera floor. All of them built on ground that could split open with minimal warning. If 78% of seismic activity went undetected until now, what other warnings remain invisible? The sensors were there. The monitoring network was dense. Yet thousands of tremors slipped through unnoticed because they were too small, too frequent, or too deeply buried in background noise. The AI didn't create new earthquakes. It simply revealed the truth. The dragon beneath Naples had been stirring far longer and far more violently than anyone knew. And this dragon has killed before. 40,000 years ago, the Companion Ignite-Bright eruption tore through this region with unimaginable force. It ejected 72 cubic miles of molten rock into the atmosphere. The eruption column reached heights that blocked out the sun. Summer turned to winter. Ash blanketed Europe and parts of Russia. Some scientists believe this eruption contributed to the extinction of Neanderthals across the continent. The caldera left behind was 12 miles wide, a scar that would shape the future of southern Italy. 15,000 years later, the caldera erupted again, 
the Neapolitan Yellow Tuff eruption formed the modern caldera structure. The second cataclysm reshaped the coastline and buried ancient settlements under meters of volcanic debris. Both eruptions dwarf anything Vesuvius has produced. Vesuvius is famous. Vesuvius destroyed Pompeii. But Campi Flagre is larger, more dangerous, and fundamentally different. Vesuvius is a mountain. You can see it. You can measure its threat. Campi Flagre is a giant crater full of cities. When it erupts, people are already inside the volcano. But there's something else historians are only now beginning to understand. In 79 AD, when Vesuvius buried Pompeii and Herculaneum, evidence suggests Campi Flagre may have erupted at the same time. Ash layers and geochemical signatures point to simultaneous activity across the Campanian volcanic arc. The Campi Flagre eruption was more widespread. Its pyroclastic flows traveled farther. Its ashfall covered a larger area. The message is disturbing. Supervolcanoes don't behave like traditional volcanoes. They erupt differently, they kill differently, and they follow patterns that are only visible over centuries. Historical analysis reveals Campi Flagre follows cycles lasting 40 to 60 years. The last major cycle began in the late 1960s. Ground levels started rising. Earthquakes became frequent. Brady Sizem, the slow upward and downward shifting of the Earth's surface, caused buildings to crack and foundations to buckle. In the 1980s, the situation reached a crisis. A magnitude 4.2 earthquake in 1984 forced authorities to evacuate 40,000 residents from Puzzuoli. Police and military cleared entire neighborhoods. Families were relocated to apartments outside the historic district. The evacuation lasted years. Rione Terra, the ancient heart of Puzzuoli, was seized permanently by the state. Today, tourists wander its empty cobblestone streets. Beautiful buildings stand uninhabited. The residents never returned. But across the rest of the caldera, life continued. Communities adapted to living with the volcano. They learned to read its moods. They felt every tremor. They watched the ground rise and fall. For decades, the relationship seemed manageable. Then, in 1985, the visible activity declined. Surface tremors lessened. Ground uplift slowed. Residents breathed easier. Authorities relaxed restrictions. Thousands moved back into the red zone. But beneath the surface, nothing had changed. The magma chamber kept sealing. Pressure kept building. The danger never went away. It simply became invisible again. Scientists monitoring the caldera knew the system was still active, but without visible signs, public concern faded. The dragon was sleeping. Or so it seemed. But the ground had one more secret. In 2025, the signs returned with a vengeance. Ground uplift now surpasses the 1984 levels that triggered mass evacuations. Seismic activity is accelerating faster than any previously recorded cycle. Between January and August 2025, five earthquakes above magnitude 4 struck the caldera. March 13 brought a magnitude 4.4 quake that cracked walls and sent families fleeing into the streets. June 30 delivered a magnitude 4.6 tremor, the strongest recorded since seismic monitoring began in 1970. Gas emissions tell the same story. Carbon dioxide output from the Solfaterra fumarole field has more than doubled since 2018. Current readings exceed 4,000 tons per day. Vent temperatures reach 128 degrees Celsius, the highest ever recorded. The air in your Putzwali carries a constant sulfur tang. Steam rises from cracks in parking lots and sidewalks. New fumaroles open overnight. Workers patch roads in the morning only to find fresh fence breaking through by evening. The volcano's heat is no longer just beneath the surface. It's invading the streets. Then came the AI bombshell that forced the emergency alert. Stanford's analysis didn't just find more earthquakes. It revealed their structure. The 54,000 tremors align along a nearly perfect ring fault system encircling the caldera's uplift zone. The ring extends both on land and beneath the Gulf of Naples. It's a continuous structural weakness, a geological pressure relief valve that could fracture catastrophically. The two fault systems converging beneath Puzzuoli are long enough to generate earthquakes in the magnitude 5 range. Researchers warn that such an event could destabilize the entire caldera. Italian authorities had no choice. The emergency alert was issued nationwide. Civil Protection Minister Nello Musumeci confirmed the state of emergency. Resources were mobilized. Structural inspections began on thousands of buildings across the red zone. Schools launched awareness campaigns. Hospitals conducted evacuation drills. 
the machinery of crisis response cranked into motion. But behind closed doors, officials reviewed the evacuation blueprint with growing dread. Europe's largest evacuation plan is ambitious. 200 trains, 1,500 buses, 50 ships, 80 aircraft, 50 emergency shelters scattered across southern Italy. The plan aims to move 500,000 residents within 72 hours of a red alert. Matteo Salvini and other senior officials have studied the logistics for years. On paper, it's comprehensive. On paper, it could work. But analysis reveals a fatal flaw. The evacuation will take 8 to 10 days to complete. Roads will jam, bridges will overflow, ports will struggle to load tens of thousands of people while maintaining order. Campi Flegre's last eruption gave two days of warning. On September 29, 1538, the ground near Pozzuoli split open. Monte Nuovo, a new volcanic cone, rose from farmland in just one week. Contemporary accounts describe darkness at noon, choking ash, the earth shaking so violently that homes collapsed. Residents fled in terror as pyroclastic surges rolled across the countryside. The eruption killed 24 people on October 6, when they climbed onto the still-hot cone to witness the spectacle. An explosion tore through the summit, engulfing them in superheated gas. The time between the first violent tremors and the eruption start? Two days. If the evacuation is still underway when the volcano erupts, thousands could die within hours. Pyroclastic flows travel at more than 200 miles per hour. They are clouds of superheated gas and volcanic particles reaching temperatures of 1,472 degrees Fahrenheit. There is no outrunning them. There is no shelter that can protect against them. Buildings collapse, forests ignite, everything in their path is incinerated. The red zone would become a death trap for anyone still inside when the first surge begins. Even without an eruption, the consequences are staggering. Naples is Italy's third largest city. Its port handles millions of tons of cargo annually. Its airport connects southern Italy to the rest of Europe. A full evacuation would shut down the entire region. Shipping halts, tourism vanishes, manufacturing collapses. The economic ripple effects would extend far beyond Italy's borders. Supply chains across Europe would fracture. Financial markets would react with panic. A prolonged crisis at Campi Flegre could trigger a continental economic downturn. And scientists are issuing their final warnings. Researchers from INGV, Stanford, and the University of Naples' Federico II now warn that current uplift in seismicity levels exceed the 1984 crisis in half the time. The acceleration suggests the caldera may be entering a new evolutionary phase. The cycles are compressing. The pressure is mounting faster. The ring fault system revealed by AI suggests the next eruption could channel magma directly from depth to surface along pre-existing fractures, bypassing the gradual buildup that provided warning in 1538. The AI team issued the most disturbing question of all. If monitoring systems missed 80% of seismic activity at Campi Flegre, what about the world's other major volcanic systems? How many hidden swarms pulse beneath Yellowstone? How many undetected tremors shake the caldera floors of Long Valley, Taupo, or Ira? The implications extend far beyond Naples. The technology that revealed Campi Flegre's secrets could reshape volcanic monitoring worldwide. But right now, the focus remains on one caldera and half a million lives. In Pozzuoli, Maria Rossi stands on her balcony overlooking the bay. The water sparkles under the afternoon sun. Boats drift lazily near the harbor. Tourists photograph the ancient columns that rise from the shore, their surfaces pocked with holes left by marine organisms when the ground sank below sea levels centuries ago. Maria has lived here for 64 years. She remembers the evacuations of the 1980s. She remembers the fear. She remembers returning home to find cracks in every wall. Now, at night, she feels the tremors through her mattress, subtle vibrations that wake her from sleep. Her daughter wants her to leave, to move inland, away from the caldera. The volcano is not just beneath our feet, Maria says quietly. It is part of us now. The statement carries no comfort, only resignation. She knows what the scientists know. She's felt the changes. She's seen steam rising from cracks that weren't there last month. She's watched neighbors pack their cars and drive away without explanation. But this is her home. This is where her family has lived for generations. And so she stays watching, waiting, listening to the Earth's unsteady heartbeat. The supervolcano's self-sealed pressure cooker may be reaching its final limit. Residents across the red zone are preparing to flee. Authorities brace for the largest civilian evacuation in Europe's history. 
The world watches and waits for the next tremor. Scientists monitor every seismic spike, every gas emission reading, every millimeter of ground deformation. The ring fault beneath Pozzuoli glows on their screens, a geometric warning written in thousands of hidden earthquakes. The AI has given them clarity, but clarity doesn't provide certainty. No one can predict if or when the seal will finally break. A supervolcano awakening, half a million lives in danger, the largest evacuation plan in Europe's history, and an AI discovery that revealed 42,000 hidden warnings. And beneath it all, a geological pressure cooker that has been building towards release for 20 years. The signs are unmistakable. The science is clear. The danger is real and immediate. But the timeline remains unknown. If a disaster like this struck your region without warning, would you be ready? Would you leave? Or would you stay, like Maria, watching the bay and feeling the earth tremble beneath your feet? The dragon beneath Naples is stirring. Whether it wakes fully and how soon is a question even artificial intelligence cannot answer. What scientists do know is this. The pressure is mounting, the ring faults are active, and 500,000 people live inside a caldera that could become the most dangerous place on Earth. What they don't know is when the centuries-old seal will fracture, or if the two days of warning that preceded the 1538 eruption will even be possible this time. For the families packing emergency bags and memorizing evacuation routes, for the officials planning the largest mass movement of civilians in modern European history, and for the scientists staring at screens full of data that grows more alarming by the day, the only certainty is uncertainty. The supervolcano is awake. The question is no longer if something will happen. It's what happens when the pressure finally breaks through.